many of us, our hearts are heavy about all the events that have taken place in our nation in the last several weeks, the shootings that seem to occur week in and week out, uh, it can weigh on us. Um, and I just pray that as we have this time of worship that we would recognize that we are still held in the everlasting and loving arms of our great God and Savior. This is a broken world, a sinful world in need of the grace and forgiveness that's found in Jesus. And, and so um, we remember this is the last Sunday in Easter, but also this was uh, the Ascension. We celebrated this, this week in which uh, Jesus ascended back to the Father. And when he said, uh, if I go to the Father, I would give to you the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. So uh, we're going to be moving into Pentecost then and celebrating that. So God is with us in the midst of all this. God is with you in the midst of all of this. We are people of hope because we're held in the everlasting and loving arms of Jesus. Be a light to the world around us. So let's, let's worship our great God and Savior. Please stand and we make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first reading today is taken from the book of Acts in the first chapter, beginning in the 12th verse. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these were with one accord and were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of persons was, all, was in all about 120 and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle and all his bowels gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem so that the field was called in their own language, Akeldama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, may his camp become desolate and let there be no one to dwell in it and let another take his office. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also called Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, you Lord who know the hearts of all, Show us which one of these you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our next reading is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 22, beginning in the first verse. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. Also on either side of the river, the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be anything accursed, for the Lord, uh, <clears throat> but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. And he said to me, these words are trustworthy and true. And the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, has sent his angel to show his servants what must soon take place. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. 
the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter, verses 20 to 26. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter, verses 20 to 26. Jesus is praying for us. Jesus in his prayer says this in verse 20, beginning in verse 20, I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may be one, they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one, that... Uh, and I in them, and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and love them even as you love me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am, to see my glory that you have given me, because you love me before the foundation of the world. O oh, righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known, that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. This is the gospel of our Lord, and praise to you, O Christ. So we want to just some, take some time in lifting this nation before God's throne of grace, and praying that we would repent and turn to him. We have turn our back on God and we're surprised that um, terrible, terrible things have been happening. Let us go to the Lord, return to the Lord, seek him with all of our heart, mind, and spirit. Cry out to him for healing. He's the only one that can bring healing to this nation, to our dysfunction that we have in this life. We also want to pray for um, Students that will be arriving, some in the summertime, new students to Penn State. Uh, we, even if you don't, uh, aren't in the state college area, we ask that you would pray for us as we reach out to international students that will be arriving and American students that will be arriving. Some in the summer again, but also a whole slew in August uh, will be coming. So we wanna lift that before God's throne of grace as well. Let's pray, let's give us uh, some time of prayer together. Father God, we come into your very presence heartbroken over the state of our nation, heartbroken over the state of the world around us. So much violence, so much hurt, so much pain and suffering. We pray for the people of Uvalde. We pray for the, the people in Buffalo. We pray for the people uh, it, it, that have lost loved ones um, out in the shooting in California in the church. Lord God, all of this violence, 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 violence. We pray, Lord God, for the many who are heartbroken in Ukraine. And we pray, Father God, that we would collectively confess our sin before you and repent and turn to you. You're the one that can bring healing to the nations. You're the one that can bring healing to the dysfunction of our own nation, our own neighborhoods, our own households. Father, we cry out to you. Give us the humility to confess before you and to repent and to return to you, the true and the living God. Our hearts break for those who are brokenhearted right now. Our hearts break for mothers and fathers who have lost their children. Our hearts break, Lord God, that for the, the way we cavalierly treat life, whether it's life in the womb or life outside of the womb. Lord God, have mercy on us. May we turn to you, truly repent and confess and turn to you, the true and living God. May we be a church that points people to the hope that is ours in and through Jesus in the midst of all this brokenness. We pray, Lord God, for the students that will be arriving at Penn State. We, all, we wanna lift, especially before you, those students that are be arriving from other nations to come to uh, study at Penn State. 
So we pray, Lord of the nations, we praise you that you have brought many new students from overseas to study at Penn State University this summer and in then this coming academic year. We praise you that many of these students desire to get to know one American family better. We pray you, Lord of the harvest, raise up families who are willing to be friends to these students, meeting with them about once a month. We thank you for this opportunity to share your love and truth. In the name of our ascendant Lord, we pray. Amen and amen to our great God and Savior. In Jesus' name we pray, as he taught us to pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
children, pour out your spirit upon the broken. Oh, loving Father, come and on us. We see your glory. We sing as Good morning. Um, we're going to be taking a look at our gospel reading from John 17, verses 20 to 26, in which Jesus is praying for his church, for his people, for you as a follower of Jesus. He's praying for us right now. Let's pray. God of grace and mercy, we're so thankful that Jesus is praying for us. We need him. We need his presence. We need his power. We need his authority. Lord, we come to you and cast ourselves before you. We are lost without you. We are weak without you. We need you, your power and your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. So I have to say to you, I'm mad and somewhat depressed as well. Another week has gone by, and what do we have? Another shooting, another mass shooting. This time, and last count that I had known, 19 elementary school children, two adults as well, I find my, who lost their lives to an 18-year-old who brings a rifle or, and, and firearms into an elementary school and starts shooting people. I find myself crying out like Job. Behold, I cry out violence, but I am not answered. I call for help, but there is no justice. Or as the, as the prophet Habakkuk complained, O oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not hear? Or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see iniquity? And why do you idly look at wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law is paralyzed and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous. So justice goes forth perverted. People are demanding that something be done about all this violence. And yet simultaneously, there are people protesting for the right to do violence to the child they're carrying in their womb, and we don't see the inconsistency in that. How lost we are, how truly lost we are. The division in our nation is greater than I can ever remember. It seems we're, at a, we're in a civil war. One group says up while the other insists down. One group says black, while the other says white. It doesn't matter what the issue is. P people quickly run to their respective tribe and want to know what their tribe is thinking on the issue, what their tribe is, uh, is speaking to on the issue. We unite in our tribes in ways that guarantees 
that we will be in perpetual discord and disunity. It is us versus them. It is good versus evil. We even dehumanize the others, proving to ourselves they're not worthy of the time of day, let alone our compassion and care. All of this is the way it has always been in the world. The sad part is that in modern America, this mindset seems to, have in, seems to have infiltrated the church as well. Jesus said in our gospel reading, he praying, I do not ask for these only, but also for those who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Jesus is praying for his church and all will be believe in him through their word. Who's their word? The words of the apostles as they're sent forth. The words of you and I as we are sent forth. What word is that? What word are people hearing from you? You know, the apostles at that time could have had a lot of things to complain about in regards to the Roman authorities and what they do or do not do and how they enact justice or do not act, enact justice. But what did they hear from the apostles? They heard the word that in Christ there is forgiveness of sin. In Christ there is healing. In Christ we need, uh, we need to turn to him and repent and have our life uh, entrusted to him for forgiveness. What are people hearing from you? Is the response to the dysfunction of our nation and the word you speak informed by the talking points of the Republican Party or the talking points of the Democratic Party? Are the words that they're hearing from you informed by the talking points of the National Rifle Association or the National Abortion Rights Action League? Where are you getting your talking points from? Do you, do you believe if you just get your team elected that the nation would be back on track and united, even if it means getting rid of those nasty people who aren't in your tribe? Or is the word you're speaking informed by God's unchanging holy word and the truth and the grace that is found in Jesus Christ. Stop and ask yourself that question. Stop and think about it. Are you fighting what is ultimately a spiritual battle that we're facing with carnal weapons. If so, <laughs> we've reduced the church to what? Just another voting block to be had by the political powers, to be moved and manipulated by the political powers. Do we believe the words of St. Paul when he emphatically wrote in Romans chapter 1, I am not ashamed of the gospel for what? It is the power of God for salvation to those who believe. Have we sold our birthright and the power of the church of the risen Jesus for a bowl of slop? where we get to sit at a political, the political table of power. We thought that's real, where real power is. We don't believe there's real power in the gospel. We've jettisoned that. There is more division in the church today than at any time since the Reformation. The division today, though, is not based on theology but on political alliance. Jesus prayed in verse 21 that they may all be one just as you, Father, are in me and I in you. 
that they also may be in us so that the world may, have, may believe that you have sent me. Does the world know you have been sent by Jesus? These, this prayer is for you and for me. Does the world know that you and I have been sent by Jesus? Or are they more likely to see you and I as an operative sent by a political party? Are you thinking about how to convince your neighbor that their thinking is politically wrong? Or are you praying for your neighbor that your neighbor would come to know Jesus and how the Holy Spirit might work in and through you to point your neighbor to Jesus? How would the world know that Jesus was sent to save the world if we don't have unity as sinners saved by the grace of Jesus Christ? How will they know? Jesus goes on to pray in verse 22, the glory, the glory, that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one even as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one so that the world may know that you have sent me and love them even as you love me. Glory. Glory. <sighs> the pursuit of political power seems to be in all in so many cases a pursuit of self-glorification. Jesus speaks of giving us his glory. What does that look like? What does it look like, really? Well, what did it look like for Jesus? A sacrificial suffering servant. Glory is not achieved in some self-aggrandizement campaign, but in bending low in service to others, in turning the other cheek, in not responding in kind to the nasty internet comments. It starts with our own church family. As our church family serves each other, even those we disagree with on some issues, the world sees a different path emulated and the glory of Jesus begins to shine forth. How can any of this happen? Well, first we must know that we are loved and experience, and experience the love of God in community. In doing so, that drives away fear. The fear that we have. The fear that can come pressing in on us. You see, fear drives us to want to be a part of a tribe where we think protection is found from those nasty others that are out there. The love of God drives us out of our tribe. Drives us out. You think about that. The apostles... They had such a, uh, an identity with their national heritage, with their Jewishness, if you will. But the Lord drove them out of that tribe to reach the Gentiles. The love of God drives us out of our tribe where we think protection would be from those nasty others. The Lord, love, love of God drives us out of the tribe, out of that tribe, to see that his love for me is so great, so fantastic, that extends to all others as well. Jesus continues in his prayer. Verse 24, Father, I desire that they also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory that you have given me because you love me before the foundation of the world. How far back it goes. You know, this has been God's plan from the beginning since the foundation of the world. Ephesians 3 talks of this, to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to bring to light 
for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This is God's plan and you the church are, part, are a part of his redemptive plan. We are in a spiritual battle folks not against flesh and blood. Our battle is a spiritual battle. We preach the manifold wisdom of God that people may know the unsearchable riches of Christ. Jesus is with us. He will not fail. He's praying for us in our weakness, our anger, our distress, our depression. Jesus continues in his prayer, verse 25, O righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. Jesus is praying for you. He's praying for you, that the depth of the love in which he knows that he is loved by the Father would be in you as well, that you would know how deeply loved you are. Do you know that kind of love? Have you received that kind of love? It is the gift that he patiently waits for you to receive. He's not going to force you to receive it. He's patiently waiting for you to receive it. It is a gift that drives us together. That our unity with, his, with each other is only in and through Jesus Christ. Because only in and through Jesus can I, a sinner, approach you, a sinner. Thanks be to God for the unsearchable riches that we have received in and through Jesus Christ, that we can go forth from here to be agents of healing in a world, in a country, in a community, in a new nation that desperately needs healing and the hope of Jesus. God be with you. God guide your steps. You are perfectly loved. You don't have to operate by fear. You don't have to operate in your tribe anymore. Go forth in the love and grace of Jesus Christ as he pushes you out of your tribe to extend the grace and forgiveness of Jesus Christ to all people. Let's pray. Father, how desperately we need you. Our hearts are troubled and broken over the events that have happened in our nation in the, and, you know, over the past, really over the past several years. We ask, Lord God, um, that we would truly turn to you, repent and put our trust fully and completely in you, that we would know and receive the, the, the absolute depth of and height and width and breadth of the love that you have for us in and through Jesus Christ. And it would drive fear from us and we would embrace it fully and completely and go forth as your people to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to all people. We pray in his mighty name, amen. Let us confess together our faith in the triune God and all he has done for us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
And I believe believe in the Holy Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Holy Holy Christian Christian Church, Church, the the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We have a, a time of confession before the Lord, and the Lord knows what's really on our heart, but what he's inviting us to do is come before him, be honest before him, come into his presence, uh, don't hide anything from him, run to him. It's a mistake for us to run from God. We should run towards him and confess to him. So let us, let's open our hearts and our minds to him. There'll be a time of silence as well that we can really pour out our hearts to God. So from the words uh, from, the, from 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's take a moment in silence to reflect upon our need for Christ. So, Lord, let us confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. But for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear the good news. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the gift of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Go forth as God's redeemed children in the strength and the power of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father God, send us forth in your might and in your power to proclaim the good news of Jesus to be agents of peace, peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers, you you said. For theirs is the kingdom of God. May we go forth, bring the peace of Jesus with us, Lord God, uh, to bring healing to our community, to their nation, to the world around us. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Thank you.